Good morning friends and welcome back to NPTEL online certification course on public speaking. My dear friends, by this time you might have realized that in public speaking communication takes place not only verbally but also non-verbally. Public speaking is perfected not only through regions but also through emotions. If regions are reflected through words, emotions can be represented in several forms as uh, we are discussing non-verbal communication, you might have all realized that our body plays a very vital role in communication. We have already talked about body, we have also talked about space in the lecture on proxemics and we also talked about chronomics that is the language of time. If space matters in communication, time matters in communication, then we also have to understand that our feelings play a vital role in communication. So, we also have to understand how our feelings have an imprint in a communication situation both from the point of view of speakers as well as from the point of view of receivers or listeners. This feeling or emotion is not only conveyed through words, but by our movements which we have already discussed in uh, the lecture on kinesics. In this regard, today we are going to discuss the importance of touch in various public speaking situations. And how can this touch be felt? How can this touch be disseminated? So, the study that deals with the language of touch or the study that actually emphasizes upon touch in communication is called haptics and that is why today's lecture is titled haptics. Who can deny the popular expression seeing is believing but feeling is the truth and in order to feel there are several agencies in our body and in this regard touch plays a very important role. Now, we will try to understand today how touch has an important role to play in communication and for that matter in public speaking. Let us begin this talk today with uh, one of the observations by Satch who say touch is the foundation for communication with the world around us and probably the single sense that is age old age life itself. So, touch plays a very important role and this touch can be studied in haptics. Now, initially you might be very much surprised to know that haptics has a role to play, but let us try to understand what is haptics. Haptic actually comes from the Greek word haptesthai, haptesthai. According to Oxford English Dictionary, haptic comes from the Greek word haptesthai that actually means of or pertaining or relating to the sense of touch or tactile sensations. Tactile uh, is uh, the other name uh, that includes touch. Now, one might be curious uh, to know how this language of touch came into being and what actually is the historical origin of it. This term haptics was coined in the year 1892 by Max Desoir, Macmillan Desoir. The term as we have said according to the dictionary as well, it comes from the Greek word haptain that actually means to 
fasten, fasten to reflect, to touch. Human skin happens to be the largest sensory organ. We can always say that entire corpus of communication has a major role to play when we discuss touch. So, touch is responsible for receiving responses and even communication. It also provides the basis for other sensory stimuli such as sight and hearing. We always say as we said earlier seeing is believing, but feeling is the truth. So, the knowledge of human touch is essential for establishing a human to human communication or connection that is through touch. Now, you might also be eager to know what could be the levels of haptics and how and in which form this haptic can be used in communication and in public speaking. Now, here let us take a quote uh, by the French philosopher Diderot, who in one of the letter on the blind writes, and I found that of all the senses, the eye was the most superficial. We have already talked about uh, the eyes when we were discussing kinesics. So, here Diderot says, I found that of all the senses, the eye was the most superficial, the ear the most haughty, the smell the most voluptuous, taste the most superstitious and inconstant, touch the most profound and philosophical. Uh, we make use of uh, this touch and we say please stay in touch. Sometimes we also say I hope uh, you are not touched. Sometimes we say I was really touched. Now, when we use such expressions what exactly do we mean? We actually mean uh, that by this sensory feeling actually something generated within us. So, the levels of haptics can be professional, social and personal. So, is touch also important and does it also play a role in professional communication, in professional life? In a professional scenario, the aspect has touch to be dealt with confidence and caution, because you never know who can be touched by what, by what sort of language, by what sort of word, by what sort of action. So, a gesture of encouragement can sometimes lead to tremendous motivation for one individual, but at the same time it may actually generate or trigger some proximic boundary violation for another. You might well remember that while we were discussing uh, the space zones, there we have already mentioned uh, that there are space zones for people even in our closed circles, people who are our distant relatives. So, there are certain regulations. So, unlike words and actions with touch one directly contacts the other person. I mean how close or how distant you are that you can understand by the way the per one person touches the other person. And in this regard contact zone plays a very vital role for a better space for mutual confidence and trust. Even in a professional life you might have seen sometimes you are touched by your superiors. Sometimes the inferiors or the people working sometimes at the same level, they are also touched and all these have got certain meanings. Sometimes you are encouraged, sometimes your confidence is to be boosted. So, it actually depends upon the person sending a signal to appropriately convey his emotion or his feeling through this means of touch. And this touch has a very important professional role to be played and it can be played in a different way fine and especially when you are exposed to a different sort of culture, then you might even realize with a single incidence of handshakes, you can understand the emotions and the feelings of the other person. 
So now here let us try to spend some time on the types of handshakes which is quite common when you are exposed to public speaking situations. In this regard, there has been a very seminal book uh, by Ellen Peace and Barbara Peace and the book is titled The Definitive Book of Body Language where they illustrate different types of handshakes and their functions. My dear friends, you might quite be surprised to know that even the way a person handshakes, it actually denotes their culture. The way your handshakes are received and the way you offer your handshake, that has actually a lot to play. That has actually a lot to mean. So, the very first is the stiff arm thrust. This actually symbolizes a distant sort of handshake. In this, you stretch out your hands, but maybe the other person sometimes would like to come closer or sometimes they may like to pull, they may like to go back. Why does this happen? This is only because of uh, the role of the culture. Maybe a person who comes from a culture where they only believe in less space or they have been oriented in a less space, naturally they would try to go back. There is another type of handshake which is socket wrencher. It actually has a strong grip when two people shake hands. You will find the one person uh, puts a strong grip. This may actually be understood as a sort of closure handshake. Then there can be a pump handle handshake. Sometimes you are very enthusiastic, very eager and you start having a handshake where, where you are pumping time and again, it, it actually becomes very rigorous. Maybe people who are not exposed to such a sort of situation may feel quite odd, they may feel it otherwise. So, you have to be very, you know, particular about how you are trying to convey a message. Then there is bone crusher, which is actually overstepping and dominant. I will also uh, uh, tell you how, what sort of handshake can be dominant, what sort of handshake can be submissive, what sort of handshake can be very aggressive, all these have got a lot to play my dear friend. And then there is a wet fish handshake, where by by which we mean uh, that there is less amount of confidence and that is why uh, while handshaking you will find that there is a feeling like wet fish. In other words, we can say dead fish handshake. Usually this dead fish handshake, it is also uh, termed as a politician's handshake, fine. Sometimes or the other, uh, we may find that the people are not interested in you, fine. Then naturally you receive a uh, a uh, dead uh, fish handshake, dead fish handshake. Of course, a politician's handshake is, uh, is a glove handshake. I mean, trying to show more warmth in it. Maybe in reality, that may not be the case. So, when it is a, a dead fish handshake, it actually shows less amount of confidence. Now, here you can find there are three sorts of handshakes. Now, the very first, look at the very first one. What happens here? It is a submissive palm position. Now, you might be thinking that I am discussing touch and then we are talking about handshakes. Yes, when you have such a sort of handshake, when your palm position is in this uh, way, you actually become very submissive. So, you are more open rather, is not it? But if the palm position is turned up, as in the second picture you can see, it is actually a case of dominant palm position. And this dominant palm position through this, the person who shows this dominant palm position actually wants to dominate. Sometimes or the other, you may also come across the third category and that is called aggressive palm position. In this what happens? Suddenly, uh, your palm, I mean all the other fingers, they are brought together and then one finger appears in the way as if you are pointing, as if you are instructing, you appear to be very aggressive. Are all these not having meaning in communication that when you are speaking as a speaker, if you consciously or unconsciously make such gestures my dear friend, they are going either to mar the soul, make the soul 
or create a different sort of your image. Hence, one has to be very particular. Now, uh, this touch is not only formal, the touch can also be informal and it can also have a lot to play when we talk about its social significance, how touch is important in social life. As it is an integral part of establishing a sort of contact, it is very important and in this regard, uh, one observation which actually needs to be mentioned is by gents and others who says uh, that the importance of active interpersonal touch, interpersonal touch which ultimately led way to overall health benefits in adulthood and development. Now, this is very important. This is practiced amongst different social circles such as family, friends, etcetera. You can already find when we talk about Jones, no, in intimate Jones, naturally you allow other people to come near you. I mean, you do not feel that the space is being violated or the space is being restricted, but then as your relationship, because interpersonal relationship depends upon are the Jones, fine, it varies from one zone to another. And so, when you find that it is a social zone, naturally the distance also will increase and touch also will distance. So, the dimensions of social touch may vary depending upon the socio-cultural context in which communication occurs. Now, here on the uh, one side you can find the picture of John Keats and uh, I am very much tempted enough uh, to quote John Keats who about touch what he says is very important. Let us read. Touch has a memory, oh say, love say, what can I do to kill it and be free in my old liberty. Now, poets are touched most often, of course, while Keats is mentioning all these, he is actually talking about an old love uh, in which he was obsessed and then that is why he says touch has a memory, it, it actually unfolds a sea of memories. Oh say love say, what can I do to kill it and be free in my old liberty, I am, I am not able uh, to be free uh, from this touch. Now, touch also matters in personal relationships. An American professor of communication calls it contact comfort. It is a primary need for higher order mammals though, but at the level of intimate relationships, touch is usually equipped to express affection and provide comfort you might have found that when uh, a mother touches the child, there is a sort of reassurance. The mother's touch to the child, it actually conveys warmth, it conveys a sort of relationship and it also gives the child a sort of reassurance, a sort of comfort. Studies reveal the important role of interpersonal touch in conveying emotions such as love, gratitude, sympathy will also come uh, to uh, one uh, observation where one scholar goes to the extent of saying that it can have 12 meanings of touch. Slight hesitation may also convey significant negative feelings such as fear and anxiety. You might have all realized that if by some way or the other you are touched suddenly by a stranger, you are frightened, is not it? You are rather frightened. But the touch of a closer one, of an intimate one actually provides a more assurance. Now, what can be the dimensions of touch and how can a communicator or how can a public speaker realize what is the intensity, what sort of emotions are conveyed or can be conveyed through it. So, it has several factors and these factors are intensity, duration, location, frequency and instrument of touch. You cannot touch anyone and everyone. There are certain regulations also and these regulations are culturally bound. Now, we have already uh, talked about how uh, while making handshakes also, uh, we see the intensity and we also see the location. We also see uh, the where a, a person is touched. For example, while you are making a handshake, you can find uh, that the thumb 
thumb suddenly goes to the wrist or sometimes uh, you allow your palm to go to the shoulder of a person. I mean once again here it is uh, oriented on the basis of one's relationship. So, when we talk about intensity, we can say about the pressure which is exerted uh, by the person's touch on another person. Say for example, if somebody is ticked on the cheek, sometimes it can also be taken as a slap, fine. Maybe if it is done by a stranger, it can appear as a slap, fine. Now comes duration, the time taken to establish a communicative contact. For example, a handshake which might turn awkward if done for long as we have discussed the pump handle style. Here I am reminded of telling you that there can be a, a handshake where you start breaking the knuckles of the other person. I mean your finger suddenly go to the other person's finger and then you press it. So, it appears as if the knuckle is knuckles are being broken. So, that can that can appear at times very odd. Then comes location, the part of the body uh, which is touched uh, for in certain cultures, you know reverence is shown by touching fine the feet of the elders. Mostly in India you can find you can come across such a situation fine and then comes frequency. The number of touches even while shaking hands, how many? No, sometimes uh, you will actually be astonished to find people shaking hands for a longer time. Sometimes a pat on the shoulder uh, might get attention whereas multiple pats may appear odd, fine. Sometimes it may also uh, reflect a sort of encouragement. There also it depends very much on the age, on the relationship and on the context. And then the instrument of touch, object or organ through which a touch is established. As I said, the fingers touched, is not it? Uh, the wrist touched, the shoulder touched. Sometimes uh, you actually uh, touch somebody and you will find that by going up the shoulder, you actually convey a more intimate feeling. Hence, one has to be very particular about uh, making the use of touch. Of course, in public speaking situations, especially when you are uh, giving a talk or a presentation, you may not come to such a pass because there is a distance. But sometimes in some other situations, you may also come across uh, such a sort of circumstance. Now, what actually could be the meanings of touch and how can we imply the meaning? Of course, it is very difficult, very challenging rather, but in one of the papers by Jones and Yarborough, they categorize seven main meanings which can be generated out of this haptic communication. You can find the pictures here, how uh, among children when they are clubbed together and they touch each other, there can be a positive, fine. So, there is a sort of effect and the effect is uh, positive. Then sometimes it may be simply when your fist touches the others and that you are doing just to uh, celebrate or just to convey some emotion that is playful. Sometimes you control, sometimes it becomes a ritual as well, sometimes it can be very hybrid, it dif differs from one culture to another, from one country to another. And then sometimes you uh, are going to remind somebody of a task and then also you touch fine sometimes not only sometimes but on many occasions touches are very accidental fine uh, but then uh, care has to be taken that you do not touch others while you are communicating now uh, touch varies from one culture to another as i said and there are several factors environment so when i say environment i can also say the venue where this public speaking or this event takes place. So, that is very important. And then the age, gender, status, relationship, all these have a very major role to play and all these factors actually help in deciding or establishing to what culture a person belongs to. Uh, it can also tell a lot about a person's background, where it can also tell you whether the person comes from a sort of high culture or a sort of low culture. We have already talked in some of the lectures about high context culture and low context culture, especially people in high context culture, they actually send messages very implicitly. 
meaning thereby through their touches also you can get to know something. I mean uh, they provide you meaning non-verbally. So, people of uh, high contact cultures like the people of Japan, uh, people of China, uh, people of Mexico and other places, they actually form groups close to each other while they are engaged in a conversation or in a public speaking situation. Uh, the eye contact becomes very direct whereas, low context culture uh, they can be considered uh, that they do not attach more importance to non-verbal rather they stick to uh, verbal language. They always try to stand farther and they are mostly spread out. There are less chances of eye contact. They always try to avoid unnecessary touch and in this case especially in low context culture louder and more verbal. People of such culture uh, believe everything to be said, everything to be written whereas people of high context culture to repeat they believe in certain meanings to be extracted through non-verbal cues. As I have been saying touch is culturally oriented in many countries let me give you some examples. In many countries such as Thailand and Laos, you cannot touch a child on the top of their head because they believe that it is a very sacred place and, and they say that the soul resides there. That is why for strangers it is actually rude to touch a child on the top of the head. You will also find that people in the US they are mostly touch deprived, touch deprived they actually uh, require more space. In France in most of the restaurants you can find that people can be touched or one can touch each other 100 times even in an hour fine in a Parisian uh, cafe you can come across uh, uh, such a situation. In many cultures left hand is not considered good and that is why nothing is offered uh, through left hand uh, to another in some cultures. Uh, we have already uh, uh, mentioned about uh, the uh, observation of Jones and Harbro who in their study have showed 12 meanings which can be communicated haptically or through touch. What are they? Affection, appreciation, attention getting, compliance, announcing a response, departures, greetings, inclusion, playful affection, playful aggression, sexual interest and support. As a public speaker you might also find that while you are speaking suddenly you raise your hand, suddenly you try to say something very emphatically and in these situations you rather make use of hands. There are uh, certain gestures that we have already talked about. We can also talk about some more where you know as a listener or as a learner you can try to find out whether the speaker is trying to deceive you. How? Because you know unconscious language that is already imprinted on our faces. So, Dr. Desmond Morris in his description of the gestures he provides certain gestures where uh, the learners can find whether the speaker or the other person is lying. Say for example, hand to face gesture suddenly we bring our hands to face gesture no it can also be considered and another can be mouth guard, mouth guard maybe sometimes you want to say something and you are trying to hide something no and you suddenly feel as a speaker that perhaps you are not sure. So, suddenly then uh, you practice this uh, mouth guard uh, gesture. Then I rub when you are in a state of confusion or you try to make something out very clearly sometimes there is a touch between the ear fine between the ear and the finger sometimes you scratch uh, your neck sometimes you know out of frustration when you want some air stream to come suddenly the listeners can all realize it. So, suddenly what you do is you pull your collar fine so that the air stream may come out and the listeners uh, become very much assured that perhaps now he is uh, feeling a sort of boredom or ennui. Nowadays since we are uh, living in a in an advanced world where technology matters the most. So, there has been a haptic technology as well 
and with the advent of technology now it is also possible to transfer tactile stimulation tactile. So, through tactile stimulation that is experience of touch through means of enhanced machines and robots you can find here. Uh, uh, apart from widespread demand in the field of gaming virtual reality systems are created at present with the extension of haptic uh, interface. Now, haptics also plays a very dominant role when it comes to disability and disability studies haptic technology plays a key role in supporting people with disability. The enhanced modality helps in navigation you, you might have found those people having uh, problems in seeing and all. Uh, so, they have a sort of stick which actually uh, uh, can tell them. So, it is with the help of the haptic technology. So, those who are visually impaired even people who are having hearing disability are also assisted to engage in music and dance activities through means of haptic assistance. Now, we have already discussed uh, that touch plays a very significant role in communication. So, as a communicator you might have from time to time felt that the way you make unconscious use of touch you are perhaps trying to communicate something. Of course, trained speakers, trained actors they know it well, but all of us are not trained. So, before uh, we come to end this talk let me make a mention of the quote by the famous novelist Margaret Atwood. You all might have uh, heard the name uh, of the novelist who uh, is a Booker Prize winner for and, and one of her famous books is The Handmaid's Tale. So, Margaret Atwood says touch comes before sight even before one can see touch comes before sight before speech. It is the first language and the last and it always tells the truth and I also try uh, to tell the truth through my experiences of how touch can create positive vibes in your life as a public speaker. So, my dear friends I hope you are touched, but intellectually fine. So, this lecture on haptics must touch you intellectually. So, that when next time you deliver a talk or a presentation you take care of all these things. See that people are touched and they are not touch deprived when it comes to wisdom, when it comes to knowledge, when it comes to intellectuality. So, with these words let me come to the end of this talk. Thank you very much. I wish you all a good day.